so so far we've looked at what happens when we transfer a certain amount of heat into a system and what does that do to the temperature of that particular system or object. In this question we introduce this idea of the equilibrium temperature or this concept of thermal equilibrium. It has to do with when two objects is in contact with each other quite intuitively and you've had probably experience with this all your life, the object with the higher temperature on average will transfer heat into the object with the lower temperature. And that happens until the two temperature becomes the same. And that's what we call thermal equilibrium. When both objects end up having the same temperature, you don't get heat transfer between these two bodies. And in fact, that is a very good functional definition of what temperature is. So in this case, we have a piece of steel, which originally is at a very high temperature, which then you dunk into a bucket of water at 10 degrees C. As it goes in, the hotter thing is going to transfer heat into the colder thing. So as a result, the steel's temperature goes down, the water's temperature goes up, and this happens until after a somewhat long time, or maybe not, depending on the size of the steel, that the water and the steel ends up being at the same temperature, which we'll call T2. All quite intuitive. Something that may or may not be as intuitive is you don't simply just average out the two temperature and call it a day. It doesn't work that way because there's a lot more water to not so much steel. And on top of that, as we saw a couple examples ago, the specific heat for steel it's a lot smaller than the specific heat of water. It basically is telling you that the steel has to drop 10 degrees for the water to go up by 1 degree, roughly speaking. There are some small assumptions that we're making here that we have to be aware of. First off, they already tell us that the final temperature is likely going to be less than the boiling point of water, which we'll discuss soon. But we're assuming that we're not past the boiling point of water, so we're not evaporating things away. Maybe initially you might get a little bit of evaporation, but then it quickly condenses again back into the water. That's what we're assuming. And just to make our calculation a lot easier, we're going to assume the specific heat, even though as the temperature change, they do change a little bit, that we're going to treat them as basically constant. So in these cases about reaching equilibrium, the way we do these questions is to say that the system is isolated from the outside. So all the heat that is transferred in and out of the steel plus all the heat that's transferred in and out to the water will be zero because you're not losing any of the heat. All the heat that comes out of the steel goes in the water. If we expand that, what you would get is because the steel is cooling down, this will end up being a negative number. And then because the water is heating up, the final temperature will be higher than the initial, so that's the positive. So, so that's why we, these two numbers can add up to give you zero. The rest is just math because we have all the numbers. We're just trying to find T2, quickly doing some algebra, expanding terms, etc. Collecting like terms, dividing over, and substituting. So it's not a simple average, but a weighted average based on the mass and the specific heat. And so the final temperature ends up being about 16 degrees. So our assumption of the water not changing specific heat should be valid. And there's definitely not a very significant amount of steam that would have been generated. So this is a fairly common type of problem in this chapter. So make sure you kind of get used to the flow and the algebra as well as the setup of these types of problems.